Hello everyone, my name is Filip Rakowski, I'm a co-founder of Vue Storefront and today I wanted to tell you a little bit about Vue Storefront Next as a follow-up to one of my articles that I wrote recently. Uh, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend to do this. This, article, uh, this video is a little bit more technical, so let's dig into it. So first question is, what is Vue Storefront Next? And Vue Storefront Next is actually a common name for all R&D efforts aiming to improve Vue Storefront architecture and make it easier to use, more flexible and more modular, which is very important. This is not a new version. This is more like a milestone because all of the changes will be incre incremental. Uh, and to understand exactly what Vue Storefront Next is and its value, let's start with how Vue Storefront with current version started. So at the beginning, two years ago, Vue Storefront was just a monolithic application. Everything was in, this, in the same package and nothing was divided. So JavaScript runtime, Vue.js itself, server-side rendering plugin system. Back then it wasn't even a plugin system. So internationalization, configuration, features, team, everything was a single monolithic application. Uh, and when Vue Storefront started growing, we saw that this is not the best approach. We need to divide some things. We need to have something that is a core functionality that will upgrade, that will improve, and something that is project specific. This is how we came to this division. So after some time, we split it features into a monolithic core, but the UI, so actually your shop, was a team. And by having that, you were able to build multiple shops on Vue Storefront while still benefiting from the same core, and we were able to ship you some updates. But as time showed, it wasn't enough, because some clients need some features, some clients doesn't need some features. For example, you might need a CMS, you might need a wish list, but some shops doesn't even need a checkout. So there was no simple way of removing some features or adding some features. So in Vue Storefront 1, we added a concept of modules. And every module is actually a single feature. So there was a CMS module, there was a cart module, catalog module. All of them were replaceable, which means if you don't like some module, you can remove it, you can replace it with other module that was built by you or by someone from the community. So by having a modularity in Vue Storefront, we were able to uh, change every feature to the one that suits us best. And what is more important, we are able to do this very in a very easy way. Uh, because previously you needed to dig into various places of the code base. So this is Vue Storefront 1. And it works very well, it serves very well, but we learned our lessons, we were building it for two years. And what we discovered is that it might not be always all that you need. So, division by features is very useful, but this is not exactly how e-commerce works. This is not exactly how service-oriented architecture works. Usually, what you're doing is you're getting the data via API from different services and combining it in your front-end. So, features are not exactly the layers that you might need to remove or replace. Sometimes, those features are layers of our application. So for example, API layer is something that you would like to replace. So this is why we came out with idea of Vue Storefront Next that is aiming to fulfill those requirements. So instead of replacing stuff by feature, we are replacing by application layers. Uh, and the main assumptions for Vue Storefront Next are to make it very flexible. So you have full control over your code, you have full control over all the tools, you can do actually whatever you want, you can connect whatever you want. You wanted it to be safe, so every layer has its output, has its input, and their implementation details aren't influencing other parts of the ecosystem. Which is really cool, because if you make changes in one of the layers, then every other layer remains untouched. So it's very flexible in terms of maintenance and also very safe in, in terms of maintenance. <laughs> the next goal was to make it easy to use. Right now, Vue Storefront is probably still the easiest tool to, uh, in e-commerce ecosystem to use, but we see a lot of room for improvement. 
and our target was to make Vista Front Next something that can be competitive to best-in-class tools from Vue.js ecosystem. And Vue.js ecosystem is known from very good developer experience. And the last thing was to make it modular. Right now, Vista Front is modular, but we wanted to keep it, but makes modules at different entities. So as I said before, uh, API layer, uh, Composables layer, team layer, you will see. So this is how Vue Storefront Next could architecture look like. So we have a team and this team is kind of a glue for everything around it. And each of the parts around it are replaceable. So let's dig a little bit deeper and explain what every part is doing. First, we have API client. API client is just a tiny abstraction layer over your e-commerce API and it gives you flexibility to change data sources, for example, replace REST API with GraphQL API or maybe combine multiple REST APIs or maybe combine multiple GraphQL APIs or combine both of them. Actually, you can do anything you want because this is an abstraction layer, which means other parts of the system doesn't care how you get the data as long as you Expose, expose them in the same format. For example, this format in Vue Front Next are simple functions. So it's get product, get category, get user. And this is how we could use them. They are very close to the API. They doesn't even need Vue.js, so you can use them across many products. So as I said before, if you will have a REST API and at some point, you decide, okay, I'm migrating to GraphQL, it wouldn't influence uh, these methods, which means you can still use them in every part of your application. It doesn't need to change even a single line of code. This is really, really cool. You can even combine REST and GraphQL in your API client. Actually, the REST part of the application doesn't care. You can even hard code this data. You can do whatever you want. The next part that I want to talk about is the part that is directly used in the UI. So those are view composables. What are composables? So view composables are tiny micro application oriented around a single entity. You may ask what are composables? So composables are feature of view free that is that was introduced a few months ago and you can already use it as a plugin for Vue 2. They're very similar to React Hook, so if you know React Hook, you will grasp this idea immediately. But what is really cool, they are keeping the reactivity of Vue.js. For example, we have used Product Composable, we have used Category Composable, we have used Checkout Composable. All of them are keeping all the functionality related to this data entity inside them. Let's have an example. This is an example of use product composable. As you can see, it's exposing us a search method, a products variable, loading variable, and error variable. All of them are reactive, which means if we perform a search, then it will populate products variable with the data that it returned, but also during the loading time, it will populate the loading variable with the loading state. So as you can see, you have whole product functionality encapsulated into single function. This is really cool. We wanted to go a little bit further because we wanted to keep the same developer experience across every platform, but we also didn't want to kill the USPs of this platform, the biggest advantages of them. How to do this? Well, Vue Storefront 1 was totally backend agnostic and Vue Storefront Next is what I like to call agnostic enough. What does it mean? It means that from the code point of view, you're actually always working with the same code. But from the integration point of view, we are using the data formats of the given platform. How it works from your code. So in view free, you have a setup method, which is kind of before created lifecycle hook. And from the setup method, you're directly uh, exporting stuff to the template. So in view 2, by default, data, computed properties and methods will return to the template. In view 3, everything that is returned by setup method is immediately returned to the template. 
and how we kept this agnostic enough approach. How we keep the same developer experience between many platforms. So we came up with idea of helpers and those helpers are actually meant to extract certain, certain data from very complex product category checkout objects. So in this example, you actually don't care what platform it is and you don't care what the data format look like because you're always using just a helper that returns you the data that you want. And we are exposing around 20 or 30 helpers like this. And because of that, it's very easy to jump into the project and immediately start working with it, even if you're not aware of the data formats uh, of a given platform. Also, it's very easy to jump between projects that are on different e-commerce platforms. So this is really cool. Now, another part is Storefront UI. You probably heard about Storefront UI because we're talking a lot about this. And Storefront UI is just a library of ready-to-use, high-quality e-commerce components that are very, very customizable, which means you can customize them to match more or less every layout. And they are very uh, responsive and they look really cool. I will show you. So this is a storybook of Storefront UI. If you don't know Storybook, it's a great tool to document components. And for Storefront UI, you can actually browse all the components that we have. You can check the modifiers, you can check them, their props, you can check their slots. Actually, you can do anything you want with them. So you can see the state of every Storefront UI component. And by using all of these components here, you can create stunning e-commerce shops in a blink of an eye. And what is really, really cool, each of these components is highly customizable because all of them have variables that you can override. And this is a base for new Vista from Steam, Capybara, that will land pretty soon, I guess. So this is an example of Storefront UI component, SF product card. As you can see, we are using here helpers from Vistorefront Next, which makes it extremely easy to populate every component with the data that you need. The last piece of the riddle is a NAX team. We decided to use NAX because of its server-side rendering capabilities and very big community. Thanks to the fact that we will be using NAX right now for the team, we don't need to maintain our own server-side rendering capabilities and we can benefit from hundreds or even thousands of NAX modules, all of them very high quality and all of them that can highly improve the developer experience and the development time of your project. For example, NAX has very good IAT module, NAX has very good out module. Uh, Actually, anything you can imagine probably has an X module to do this. What's the status of Vistor from Next? Right now, we are building two projects in parallel to test our ideas. The first one is Shopware, and it's on the developer preview phase. The second one is Commerce Tools integration. We aim for developer preview in March. Actually, at the moment of recording this video, Shopware PWA is being shown by our team on Shopware Partner Days. So, fingers crossed for guys. I said at the beginning that View Storefront Next is not a new version of View Storefront. It's something that we want to implement iteratively. So, what's the plan to adoption of View Storefront Next in current View Storefront? So, first thing is new team on, on Storefront UI. Uh, we called it Capybara and it should be ready within one or two months. The second thing is GraphQL Storefront API. You probably heard about Storefront API. It's a great project that evolved from Vue Storefront API and is best based on GraphQL. And we aim to replace Vue Storefront API with this client. The third thing that we want to implement are composables. So you can already check how they work in Commerce Tools and Shopper implementation. We still have some things that we need to figure out. So if we will test them in the field and we'll be sure that the current interfaces are good enough, then we'll implement them in Vue Storefront. Now it's a demo time. So I want to show you the repository of Vue Storefront next with Commerce Tools integration. Please keep in mind that it's a work in progress and I only want to show you some concepts. So as you can see, we have this division to Commerce Tools and to Core. Core are the interfaces that are used in every Vue Storefront integration. So 
We have interfaces for use category composable, use product composable, use card, and all of them. All of the properties of these composables are generic, which means for every platform, the format is slightly different, but the developer experience across every platform is also very consistent. So we are giving you the details of your platform so you can benefit from your knowledge, but also the high level API is the same for every integration. So this is how it looks like. And now let's take a look how the integration looks like. So nothing new, nothing that you don't know. So we have API client and in API client we have this tiny abstraction layer and API client is exposing all of them. Next, we have composables. So the functions, the micro applications that we will use in, a, in our application. Then we have helpers that are meant to extract certain data from products, categories, checkout fields. And finally, we have a team. And team is actually what will be your application. So in Vistor from Next, we'll be creating Vistor from application for CLI and the CLI will create you a team. And this team will have all these packages that I mentioned as their dependencies. So just like here, we have commerce tools, helpers, composables, API, also dedicated Nux module. Please keep in mind, all these pages are work in progress, so there's a lot of hard-coded data, but you can see that actually everything here is really simple, and in a setup method, in a, in a product page, we're just getting the product through uh, use product method, and then Expo exposing it to the template. Same in a category page, same in a checkout page. More to come. If you want to keep track of all the changes in commerce tools and shopper PWA Vistorfront Next integrations, you can just visit the repos of Vistorfront Next and of shopper PWA, or you can ask questions and discuss on Slack. We are very keen to get your feedback, so if you have any suggestions, any thoughts, please write to me, write on Slack. We are waiting for your feedback. Thank you very much.